This is the Unit 5 test treaty. Number one, Paula is 1,125 millimeters tall. How tall is Paula in meters? So this question, you're just converting within the metric system from millimeters to meters. So remember, we talked about King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. All right, so that's just to help remember the prefixes. So we know millimeters is starting over here at the M, and then we're, we need to move that to meters. And anytime you're converting within the metric system, you're really just moving the decimal. So meters would be here under the um, the B, which stands for basic unit. So this is your, your meters, your grams, and your liters. All right, so we want to go from millimeters to meters. So that would be one, two, three steps to the left. All right, so if we start off with 1,125, our decimals in the back here, we're just going to move it over three places. So that becomes 1.125, and this is in meters. All right, number two says a swimming pool holds four gallons of water. How many cups of water does it hold? So this is um, our standard um, measurement system. So for these problems, um, you can use a proportion for that. And we want to change from gallons into cups. So I'm going to write those words down so I don't forget about them. Um, and then I don't know from what they tell me how many gallons or how many cups are in a gallon. So I can look at my um, star chart. It has some of those units on it. But I can also remember um, the land of gallon. So remember the land of gallon was that giant G. Um, and then there were four queens or four quarts that lived in the land of gallon. And each queen had a prince and a princess. Remember that? And so we could see in one gallon there were eight pints. And then within each pint or with um, each prince or princess, they had two cats. So those were our two cups in every pint. So if we put cups in all our peas here, then that's how many cups are in one complete gallon. So if I count those up, I'm going to see that there are 16 cups in a gallon. So I want to use that for my proportion. So in one gallon, I can um, see that there are 16 cups. I want to know how many cups are in four gallons. So that's going to go up here with the gallons. And then I'm solving four cups. So I want to multiply across diagonally. So 16 times 4 would be 64. Divide by 1 is still just 64. So that tells me there are 64 cups and 4 gallons. All right, on number 3, it says that Rahim rides his skateboard 0 0.8 miles. How many yards did Rahim ride his skateboard? Okay, so this one, there's no land of gallon. It's not the metric system. And so we're just going to have to either know this already or look it up. And this one actually is on your star chart. So if you were looking for mar miles and yards, you would see on there that one mile is actually equal to, oops, sorry, equal to 1,760 yards. And so this one, you can just go kind of directly into your proportion. And um, you still want to label everything so you get it in the right spot. So I know in one mile, there's 1,760 yards. And then I'm trying to figure out how many yards are in 0.8 miles. So that's going to go up here with my miles. And then I'm going to solve. Again, I'm just cross multiplying. So 1,760 times 0.8. 0 times 8 is 0. 8 times 6 is 48. Carry your 4. 8 times 7 is 56 plus 4 is 60. And then 8 times 1 is 8 plus 6 is 14. Don't forget about your decimal over here. You're going to move that one place. So that tells me that there are 1,408 yards and 0 0.8 miles. Okay. And dividing by one doesn't change it. That's why I kind of skipped over that. Number four, what is 23% written as a fraction in simplest form? So this is just your standard FDP problem. I'm starting with a percent. I need to go to fraction. Remember, anytime I move um, from P to D, I'm going to move my decimal two places. Since I'm going from percent to decimal, I'm moving it to the left. So it's starting over here at the back. If I move it two places, it's now 0.23. All right. And then to go from decimal to fraction, I'm going to say it, write it like I say it. So I would say this is 23 hundredths. So I'm going to write it like 23 hundredths. And then this doesn't simplify, so my fraction is just 23 over 100. Number five. It's telling me to order the numbers from least to greatest. And I've got percents, decimals, and fractions. So before I can order these, I have to change them all into the same form of the number. So either all percents or all decimals, I wouldn't change anything to fractions because then you have to find a common denominator. That's going to take you a while. And so whatever you prefer. I tend to like percents, so I'm going to go ahead and change everything to percent. This first one is already a percent, so I'm going to make my list negative 345%. And then I'm going to change this 3.09 into a decimal by moving it, because I'm going this time decimal to percent, 
moving my decimal the opposite direction to the right. And so that would be 309%. Now, this problem has decimal, I mean, sorry, negatives and positives, so don't lose your negative. This is negative three point something. I'm gonna change that one fifth into a decimal. So I'm gonna go ahead and top in, bottom out, tie bow that, bring it. My decimal, add a zero, five will go into 10 two times. All right, so that becomes negative 3.2, right, from this negative three, but then I still have to move it two places, going this way. So I'm gonna add a zero here, and that becomes negative 20%. All right, same thing over here. I'm starting with three and nine tenths. So the three is my whole number, that's gonna go in front. But then I still have to change the nine tenths into a Decimal, I do that with typo, so top and then nine goes in, 10 goes out. 10 won't go into nine, so add your decimal, bring that up, and your zero. 10 will go into 90, nine times. All right, so that gives me, start it with a three, so that becomes 3.9. Again, I have to move it two places. I'm gonna add a zero. This time it's positive 390%. All right, and then I'm gonna check to make sure I'm putting it in the right order, least to greatest. I'm gonna start with my negative numbers. Remember, negatives are the opposites. Of positives, they work the opposite. So really the one that looks the biggest is actually my smallest. It's the furthest from zero. So negative 345% and negative 320%. When I switch over to my positives, it's going to go back to normal. So 309% and then 390%. And then be able to go back to how they originally started. So this negative 345%, it was a percent. I didn't change it. So I'm going to leave it the same. The three, um, negative 320 was actually this problem right here, the negative three and one-fifth. 309 was really the decimal, 3.09, and then 390 came from this fraction, three and nine-tenths. All right, so both of these are correct, but you may only have one of them as an option when you're taking your test, so make sure you know how to do both. Number six. So as an archer, practice shooting arrows at a target for four weeks. The table shows the archer's success rates in hitting the bullseye. Which week did the archer have the highest success rate? So I'm comparing numbers that are, again, in different forms. So um, I want to change everything to the same thing. I like percents. I'm going to change them to percents. This one is a little different, 14 out of 25. Hopefully you realize that kind of sounds like a fraction. So I'm going to write it as a fraction first, but then I still need to change it. So I do that using Tybo. 25 doesn't go into 1 or 14. So I'm going to add my decimal, bring it up, and divide into 140. So think about quarters. Quarters um, it takes five quarters to make a dollar forty. Actually, to make a dollar twenty-five, and then when I subtract, I get fifteen. If I bring down another zero, twenty-five into one fifty, that'd be six quarters for a dollar fifty. So I'm done. So that's 0.56, and then if I change that into a percent, it's going to become fifty-six percent. Week two is already a percent. Week three, if I move my decimal, I'm going to add a zero, so that becomes eighty percent. And then 11, 20 is, again, I'm going to have to do top and bottom out. 20 doesn't go into 1 or 11. Add your decimal, bring it up. 20 will go into 110 five times. 5 times 20 is 100. When I subtract, I get 10. Bring down another 0. 20 will go into 100 five times. All right, so again, I'm going to move my decimal over two places to make it a percent. And so this is 55%. So if I'm looking for the highest success rate, I'm looking for the highest percentage. So out of the four percentages here, I can see that 80% is the highest, and that was in week three, so that would be C. All right, if we continue. All right, number seven, nine is 60%, oops, sorry, nine is 60% of what number? All right, so this is a percent problem, but it's not asking for like a fraction or a decimal. It's asking um, about the percent of something. And so I want to go ahead and use my either my percent proportion or sometimes with these percent problems, if, um, if I'm finding the percent of a number, I can use a shortcut. This one is not asking for this. This is telling me what the percent is. Nine is 60%. So I need to use the proportion on this one. I'm going to start by drawing my boxes. I know that um, with percents, I'm always going to have that 100, and the percent will always go above that. So I can tell right here the percent is 60%. So that gets, I'm going to write that above the 100. And then I'm always going to compare part to whole. Sometimes that's easier to figure out than others. And if they're using this format right here, sometimes we can look for the is and the of for the part and the whole. Nine is, so that tells me nine is the part, and I'm solving for 
um, the whole. It's nine to sixty percent of what number? Okay, so then to solve a proportion, you multiply diagonally. So nine times a hundred is going to be nine hundred, and then I still have to divide by the sixty. So I'm going to divide sixty into nine hundred. Doesn't go into the sorry. Can you see that? Won't go into nine, but it will go into ninety one time. When I subtract, I get thirty. Bring down the zero. 60 will go into 300 five times. Okay, and so I was solving for the whole, so that's just gonna be a number 15. And number eight, I'm finding 33% of 25. So when I find the percent of a number, I can use the shortcut, but maybe I don't see that. So I can also set up a proportion. All right, so I know that the percent is 33, that goes above the 100 of 25. So just kind of like here is an of. Um, of is the total, so think of it as like out of 25, so 25 would go down here and then the x here. So I can solve this like that, or because it's the percent of something, I'm going to change my percent to a decimal, so I'm moving that two places, it becomes 0.33, and then I'm multiplying times 25. Now you'll get the same answer either way, you just don't have to worry about the division part. So 3 times 5 is 15, carry your 1, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Start with a zero, three times five is 15, carry your one, three times two is six, plus one is seven. All right, so adding these up, I get five, seven plus five is 12, one plus seven is eight, and then I wanna make sure I have my decimal here, so I'm gonna move it over two places. This becomes 8.25, okay? I'm finding the, the part this time, so then my answer is just the number 8.25. All right, on number nine, I have 12 is what percent of 50? So, for this one, since I'm not finding the percent of something, I'm going to go back to the proportion and the 100 goes here on the bottom. This time the 12 and the 50 are not the percents, they're just numbers, so I don't know that. So that's going to be my variable here. 12 is, that's your part, 12 over of 50, right? That's the out of part, so that's the whole. And then I'm just going to solve like I normally would solve a proportion, 12 times 100. You don't know what that is. You can just multiply like you normally would. Start with a zero on that second row. Here's zero, zero, one. You're gonna end up with 1,200. Then you still have to divide by the 50. So I wanna make sure to do that. 50 doesn't go into one. It doesn't go into 12. Make sure you line everything up. 50, I'll go into 120 twice. So I'm gonna subtract 100. That gives me 20. Bring down this last zero. 50, I'll go into 200 four times. All right, so this time I'm solving for the percent, right? So instead of writing the number 24, I need to make sure I change it to a percent, all right, by using that percent sign. Number 10 says uh, Riley has $12. She wants to buy a notebook for $10.50. The sales tax is 8%. Does she have enough money? All right, so this, to find the tax on the notebook, I need to find the percent of what she spends. So that's a... Um, percent of a number, so I can use the shortcut on this one. So I'm changing the 8% into a decimal, which means I'm moving the decimal two places. So I have to put a zero in front of that. So that becomes 0 0.08. And then I'm gonna multiply it times the cost. All right, so this is what it cost her, the $10.50. And that's what I wanna multiply to find the tax on. So eight times zero is zero, eight times five is 40, carry your four, eight times zero is zero, plus four is four, eight times one is eight. And then don't forget about your decimal. There are four decimal places. So I'm going to move it over four places. And so since this is money, I can drop those last two zeros. This is just 84 cents. Okay, but on all these problems, make sure you read the question. So the question is, does she have enough money to buy this notebook? So she has $12, all right? So if I add the tax to what she has to spend or to the cost of the notebook, then I'm going to get four, 13, here your one, one, and one. Bring down your decimal. So it's gonna cost her $11.34. If she has 12, then she's got enough money. So yes, she has enough money. On 11, it says the original price of a jacket is $42. The sale price is 35% off of the original price. What is the sale price of the jacket? All right, so starting with $42, I'm taking a percent off. That's the percent of this. So I'm gonna change my percent to a decimal. So that becomes 0.35, and then I'm going to multiply it times the jacket, the price of the jacket. So 5 times 2 is 10, carry your 1, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 1 is 21. Start with a 0, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 4 is 12, and then add everything up. So I've got 0, 7, 4, and 1, 
or two decimal places. I'm gonna move that over two places. All right, and again, this is money. And what I found was the 35% off part. So if I wanna know the sale price, the new price, right, I'm gonna be subtracting that from the original price, which was $42. So I'm gonna add some zeros here so I can subtract the discount. So zero minus zero is zero. For this one, I'm gonna to need to borrow 10 minus seven is three. I'm gonna bring down that decimal. Can't subtract four from one, so I'm gonna borrow again. 11 minus four is seven. Three minus one is two. So the new cost of the jacket is $27.30. For number 12, it says Nelson has stuffed 152 envelopes. This is 72% of envelopes he must stuff. How many envelopes does he need to stuff? Round to the nearest whole number. All right, so this one, um, this number, the 152, is the percent. This is telling me the part. If I set this up as a proportion, okay, this would, the 152 is not all of the numbers. Okay, he's looking, we're looking for all the envelopes he has to stuff. This is just what he's done so far. So that's the part, I don't know the whole. So I'm not finding the percent of a number, I'm finding the whole. So I can't use the shortcut on this one. So that means the hundreds here, the 72% is gonna go above that. So I'm gonna multiply these two numbers, 152 times 100. So if I do zeros, and then start with a zero, and start with two zeros, it's going to end up being 251 when I add these up. I get 15,200, but I still need to divide by the 72. So it won't go into 1 or 15. 72 will go into 152 two times. That will be 144. When I subtract, I'm going to get 8. Bring down the 0. 72 will go into 80 once. So when I subtract, I'm going to get 8. Oops. I'm going to bring down another zero. 72 will go into 80 once again. So I can see that this is repeating, but I'm going to go ahead and do my decimal place. 72 will go into 80 one time, and I know that this one is going to keep repeating. Okay, so I do that because it's telling me to round to the nearest whole number, all right? So I don't want the decimal. I want to round to the nearest whole number or the nearest ones place. That point one is what I want to get rid of that I have to decide if it rounds this up. Since it's less than five, right, it's not gonna be enough to round that up. So this is just gonna round to 211, right? And this is the amount of envelopes he has to stuff in total. So this is what he's already done and we just solved for the whole. All right, so I'm gonna stop there and then I'll pick this up in part two.